We're going to feel this, y'all. Today, the United States has hit a $34 trillion debt. There's a lot that got to happen now, y'all. There's a lot that got to happen. I wrote some stuff down. With the debt ceiling hitting $34 trillion, the government now is in another battle for funding, Jose. Right? Which means in June, we had it the first time. They temporarily lifted the debt ceiling. And since then, America has now went into more debt, which is expected, right? Anytime you give somebody an opportunity to print money with, with, with no disregard, with no disregard. So even today, well, not today, I think Bitcoin has something coming up called the halving, the halving, right? And what they're going to do is they're going to cut the Bitcoin that's out in half. So they only want you to they only want you to have about they only want to have about 28 million bitcoins for purchase at all time. So what that does is it keeps it from being manipulated. So that's going to hurt the the miners and they be trying to create it like nope, 28 million. Anything outside of that gone. Right? So that's what keeps it under control. Right? All my Bitcoin people, I gave y'all a shout out just now. Right? I gave y'all, that's the alley you. Also, also, up for debate on the 19th is the Kathy Woods Bitcoin ETF. The art ETF for Bitcoin, which is going to track the price of Bitcoin. Another alley you. Bitcoin hit 45000 a day. Another alley you. Right, 21 million, thank you, 21 million. Thank you, 21 million. Which is good. You know what that's the equivalent to? That's the equivalent to having a gold standard. That's what that's the equivalent to. So if you can only have 21 million Bitcoins, right? If you can only have 21, we can't exceed that which is the equivalent to America having a gold standard, meaning you can't print more money than gold that we have. You feel me? But what happens is Richard Nixon, Tricky Dicky, is what they call him, said, man, screw that gold standard. Right? So how what the dollar was, at one point in time, you can only produce as much paper currency as we had gold. But the minute you take away, yep, somebody just said, the minute you take away the scarcity of it, you take away the value. You decrease the value. And when you decrease the value of it, you do what Americans do. Manipulation. And so this is how we get $34 trillion, because nobody said to Richard Nixon, hey, go on, put that back, bro. Because here's what he did. He said, this is going to be for a limited time for the, we need to fund the war. That's what he said, cuz. People were against it until they started doing what? Lining their pockets. Man, print a little more. Print a little more. And before you know it, what happens is you get 34 trillion in debt, and this will ultimately be the demise of America. There are very few countries, let me say this, cuz, there are very few countries you can go to and start from nothing and then become multimillionaires. There's very few countries. There are very, very, very few that you can go where you can just start from nothing and then, you know, you can become multimillionaire even billionaires. But there are so many other, other things that's wrong with this country. Right? And I think uh, this, is, this is truly this is truly going to be one of the downfalls of America because you have two sides of the government. One side that says we need to print more money and one side that says we need to stop printing money and they can never come to a agreement. And the the person who f gets affected by this the most is the everyday American person. America being $34 trillion in debt is equivalent to 
every person in America being $100,000 in debt or $260,000 in debt per household. There we go, Jose. It came out right that time. Right? That's what that's equivalent to. Or if every person in America paid $1,000 a month, it would take America 22 years to clear this debt. On top of that, Jose, America now pays $2 billion a day in interest payments on the debt. What's good, Trappers, man? It's your boy, The Wall Street Trapper. Right now, I want to invite you to an amazing experience full of value. That is my community, Trappers Anonymous. It's 100% the greatest fundamental investing community on the market. Listen, your portfolio should be a masterpiece. And the only way we get you there is if we help you to learn how to invest with confidence. Now listen, I get it. Like you don't know a lot about stocks or maybe you've heard people say how much money they lost in stocks, but I can guarantee you one, because they weren't in the community and two, they lack the information. Our goal in Travis Anonymous is to help you, really to hold your hand on the journey to becoming a confident investor, learning how to navigate through the different events that the stock market goes through to take you from panic to encouragement. There's no better time than now. This is an opportunity only for those who are willing to be on the journey. So listen, man, click the link below. Come join me in Travis Anonymous, man. I will see you in one of our many classes, whether it's Moat Monday, whether it's the two hour class we do on Sunday, or whether it's just a book club, everything is geared toward making you a better investor so you can triple your network and turn your last name to an asset. It's your boy Wall Street Traveler. See you in the trap. This is why it's extremely important that we start playing a wealth game. This is truly why your money needs to be in assets. Because the dollar will consistently depreciate because of this alone. And because they will not stop printing money until this whole thing collapses. There's a point, there, Jose, there's a point in time where you're so far in, you can't turn back. You feel me? That's what America is. They're so far, when we think about Bernie Madoff, prime example of that. He could have stopped when he was five million, right? Like, all right, I'm too far. Let me end this lie. I could chill, right? I'm not gonna go. To, I'm not gonna go get life in prison, right? But then he was like, "Shit, I'm one billion in. Keep going." Madoff was so far in when he got caught. He was relieved. No, 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 no. He was so far, because what happens is you get so far in it, you like, damn. I ain't never cheated, bro. I don't know. I've never, I've never cheated. I've only been two relations my whole life. I didn't cheat in either one of them. Right? We so far in where there's a relief when you get caught. Like, you know what? <sighs> Shit, thank you. You know why? Because he was so far in, some of the people that was in with him knew what he was doing, so they start manipulating you too. So now it ain't what you thought it was no more. Right? So America, 34 trillion in, bruh, dog, they so far in, they can't stop. And the reason so far they can't stop is because now everybody else that comes in got to play the game. No matter who it is, because the game is no longer about a president no more. Right. The game is no longer about a president no more. The game is now about the people, the elites. Remember, there's three classes in America, four classes. There's the elites. There's the management class. There's the working class, and then there's the poverty class. There's the elites. There's the management class. These are the people that manage what's going on. There's the working class 
who answer to the management class, and then there's the people in that poverty class where you you ain't, it is what it is. There's the four classes in here, whether you know it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you understand it or not. The elite class is the class who has enough money to dictate American policy. You know why? Because if you have enough money, you can do what? You can make bills going your way. That is called lo lobbying, right? And if I give money to charities, then these charities now do what? Move things in my favor. This is how the elite stay in, t in, in power. So when we put it, watch this. We put a president in place. He's already been systemized. He or she. They've already been systemized. They've already been playing the game. Because the most powerful perceived, watch what I'm saying, Jose. The most powerful perceived position in America is the president. It's not the most powerful position. It's the most powerful position is the people that tell the president what to do. Because if the president was the most powerful position, he could go in there and do whatever he won't do. He still got to answer the people. By the time you get a president in play, the president has already played the game so long he understands what's going on. I'm not telling nobody not to vote or none of that. I don't got nothing to do with that. You do what you do. Like, that ain't my position to tell you what not to do. That ain't, I ain't, that ain't me. You do what you feel is your civic duty as an American. Right? So watch this. I remember when I was watching one of the most profound things, Jose. When I was watching Yellowstone, Jose, the governor, the governor at the time was a woman. And she told the OG, she said, when he ran for governor, he became governor. He didn't want to do nothing the people wanted. Right? Because he represented for the ranchers. He was like, the only reason I'm becoming governor is for my family, but the ranchers, what I want, I probably the ranchers want too. So everything he did was for the ranch. So in essence, he was still a people person. He was for the people. But the lady told him something. She said, and this was important, I caught this gem. She said, you are now playing a different game. You are not the livestock officer no more, agent no more. You are now a government official. And the way that you get things done that you want to get done is you got to do things for other people. You can't keep canceling those dinners. You can't keep canceling those speaking engagements where you just show up to the panel and salute for the person that's speaking. You ain't really saying too much. You just got to go. You got to go show face. He said, why am I showing face if I ain't really saying nothing? Because the way that you get things moved in this game is by showing face. He said, I don't want to play the game. I don't care about none of what they got going on. You feel me? But her thing was to go up to go to Senate. And eventually she'll play the game long enough to try to either go for president or vice president. or Right. So she she's already been indoctrinated. And if we paid attention to it a couple times along the way, she crossed him. It's a rootless game. 50 Cent said something that was amazing. He said, man, the corporate world is more dangerous than the, street, than the streets. At least in the streets, I know where the killer going to come from. In the corporate world, they're going to make me go bankrupt with a smile and a pen and a paper. So I'm saying that to say that as American people, you truly need to understand how to play the wealth game. You truly need to invest more of your money than you save. You need to save more money than you spend, and you need to spend less than you need to.